now uh, let's move to the fourth problem if I remember correct so yeah in the first problem uh, piggy banks we have um, and up to 1 million um, piggy banks uh, each of piggy banks have uh, one key and it is stored in another piggy bank or maybe in the same one <laughs> I think <laughs> I, I well yeah you can do that uh, so we want uh, to open all of the piggy banks if we have uh, corresponding key we can just uh, open and uh, if we don't we can uh, break it open so uh, we want to break the minimal number of uh, piggy banks uh, such that we we can open uh, all of them so this can be viewed as a graph problem let's hope that it will work no it won't <laughs> I don't know what's happening it worked before So yeah, maybe the problem is that I'm doing screencast and it's too much action, I don't know. Maybe I should lower the quality, but uh, if I do that, the code renders unreadable, I think. I should think. <laughs> um, okay, so let's solve the problem. Uh, so our uh, piggy banks will be vertices of the graph, and uh, there is an edge from uh, some vertex V to vertex U. If uh, so, yeah, it's. Mm. How convenient. <laughs> the edge uh, is uh, oriented and we have edge from uh, V to U. Uh, if uh, the piggy bank V contains the key for, for piggy bank U. Uh, so um, we will have some graph uh, and what uh, how can we solve the problem using this graph mm, let's uh, see that if we uh, like go into uh, break some uh, piggy banks we can do it in the beginning uh, like if we are going to break it uh, someone uh, uh, sometime uh, we can uh, just break it in the beginning and nothing can stop us mm. so we should just uh, choose some subset of uh, piggy banks to break and then like we can't break uh, anymore uh, and it should just happen that we can open uh, all other piggy banks without breaking um, so uh, how to check if we can open some piggy bank well we know where the uh, key for this piggy bank were, uh, were uh, so uh, 
we should have opened uh, the piggyback with the key uh, before. Uh, how can that happen? We could either break it in the beginning, or we could like find the key for that piggy bank and open uh, it with key. Uh, so, if we want to check for some piggy bank that uh, we can open it with key, we should just go uh, by the like reverse edges. And if we uh, get to the piggy bank that we break in the beginning, uh, then we are good. Like we have uh, broken the first one, we get the key for second, then we open the second, we get the key for third, open the third, we get the key for fourth, and so on. Uh, like, and then we will uh, sometime uh, get to the uh, piggy bank we want. So it should just uh, be the way that um, each uh, piggy bank is uh, reachable by edges. Like we have gone for reversed edges, but uh, the piggy bank you uh, is uh, can be opened if it is uh, reachable by. Uh, not reversed, our, like by our directed edges from some uh, piggy bank we smashed. Um, so we should uh, choose some subset of vertices such that uh, any other verti uh, vertex is reachable from uh, one of our choose vertices. And uh, I think this is a classical problem. Um, We can um, build uh, strongly connected components uh, for this directed graph, um, and let's look at uh, some uh, strongly connected component. Uh, which doesn't have incoming edges like from other components. Mm -hmm. Why? Don't you just work <laughs> like um, there are some connected comp components that uh, have edges from uh, like outside this component, and for some components, there are uh, no such edges. Like for every component that don't have such edges, uh, we have to choose uh, at least one vertex from this component. Because otherwise we cannot reach this component. Uh, there is no way to get to this component uh, outside of it. So we have to choose at least one vertex. And one vertex is enough. Uh, like if we have one vertex in strongly connected component, then we can reach all other vertices in this uh, strongly connected component. That, like, the definition. <laughs> uh, and I um, okay. I state that uh, it's enough if we just take one vertex from each uh, str strongly connected component that uh, don't have incoming edges, then we can reach everything. Uh, why is it true? Uh, well, um, for uh, let's uh, prove by contradiction. Let's uh, say that uh, we have some strongly connected component and there is incoming edge from outside and uh, we say that we didn't reach this strongly connected component okay this incoming edge is from some other uh, strongly connected component and obviously we didn't reach this one also otherwise we would reach this one so uh, this is also a strongly connected component which we didn't reach, and it also uh, have some incoming edge from outside. Otherwise, we would just pick a vertex here. Uh, so we can uh, go uh, backwards 
by reversed edges and uh, we can do it forever and uh, each time we are going through a um, component which we didn't reach uh, so but how can we uh, go through strongly connected components uh, infinitely well uh, it means that after some time there should be like directed cycle something like this it don't have to go to the first one but it should be a cycle because we just have a limited number of connected components it's not infinite but we can somehow go uh, infinitely uh, so and then we can see that uh, this thing is actually one strongly connected component uh, from each strongly connected component we can go by edges to like from each vertex here we can go to every vertex in this sync and it's true that for uh, the cycle we can go uh, to uh, actually every vertex uh, in the cycle so this should be a part of one big uh, strongly connected component but it is not so uh, this can happen it uh, can't happen uh, so uh, we have a contradiction and uh, actually every uh, connected component will be reached so uh, we just have to calculate the number of uh, strongly connected components which doesn't have any incoming edges and uh, we can uh, explicitly find strongly connected components uh, go through all edges and mark every connected component if it has uh, incoming edge from other component and in such a way we, we will calculate the number of uh, strongly connected components that do not have incoming edges. So let's do this. strict memory limit but I think we will be fine like we have to uh, we have one million edges each edge should be stored twice so it's eight megabytes and vector is multiplying by two uh, but it should be enough millions here um, the vectors the, they themselves take memory so yeah I guess we cannot <laughs> store the cars this way this is insane <laughs> okay let's write a solution uh, this way we will get memory limit obviously and then we will have to find some better ways i guess we can uh, okay, um, we can use the fact that uh, each vertex has exactly one uh, incoming edge. Um, such graphs, uh, they're called uh, like uh, if the graph has the uh, inversed uh, condition, like each vertex has one outcoming edge. Uh, such graphs are called functional graphs because, like, if uh, there is exactly one edge from 
it's vertex let's say it's vertex v it's u it's uh, we have a function on every vertex uh, this function returns uh, the vertex on the only edge from this one and goes to so and uh, this is why these graphs are called functional. So we have uh, inverse property. Uh, each vertex has exactly one incoming edge. Uh, well, these graphs looks like this. They have uh, some cycles. Almost. Uh, so in our case, uh, each yeah, each vertex here have uh, one uh, income edge, so uh, and from some vertices of the cycles, uh, there are some trees which were grow to the outside in this case. So yeah, it can be from from any vertex of the cycle. From some vertex, there can be no trees, just one vertex. Um, and so we can see that, uh, like, uh, yeah, and there can be many of the cycles, uh, each having their own trees. Uh, so for uh, this type of graph, uh, actually, like every component we want, uh, I, I uh, to remind that these uh, components that have uh, no incoming edges, like the uh, every component will look like uh, either the cycle or uh, just one vertex uh, which is in tree. So, uh, and for components that are vertices in trees. Uh, like they do have incoming edges from outside and for the cycles they don't. So we want to calculate the number of cycles actually. And uh, yeah, we can do that. It's, uh, we don't have to um, start it this way. I'm just start. Um, Okay, let's reverse edges. Um, we'll, for each vertex, we will start like, uh, from where uh, we can go to this vertex. Um, great. Uh, okay. Uh, well. So how to do this? Uh, well, the method I'm using uh, most of the time when I see this uh, functional graphs um, is uh, doing like BFS-like uh, algorithm, uh, which uh, does the following: it just uh, takes some leaf of uh, all these trees and erase it. How do you do that? Like, what is the leaf of the tree? Uh, well, in our case, it's the vertex which don't have uh, outcoming edges, but uh, like if we reverse the graph, which we did, uh, it's actually the vertex that don't have incoming edges, and every vertex has exactly one outcoming edge, always. So, uh, we will uh, just, we want to uh, erase vertices which uh, don't have um, incoming edges. Uh, for this purpose, we will uh, store the degree of uh, each, uh, like incoming degree of each vertex, and if it is zero, we can delete it. To delete a vertex, we will just, uh, 
uh, like BFS, we will uh, add it to the queue and then so, uh, at some time in the future we will delete it. Uh, when we delete the vertex, we have to uh, like delete all the edges. Uh, the vertex don't have uh, any incoming edges and it has exactly one outcoming edge. Uh, we just start in this array. So we uh, go and uh, what will happen uh, to the like other end of this edge? Uh, it had uh, like this incoming edge, and then uh, we want to erase it. So this uh, the incoming degree of uh, this vertex will decrease by one, and maybe it will become zero. It will mean that uh, this vertex became a leaf of some tree. Uh, and we should put it in the uh, queue. So let's do this. We have degrees, we have queue. I'm reading the graph, uh, and with uh, the reading, uh, I'm calculating the number of incoming edges. So from vertex E, the edge goes to uh, 0 of E, and uh, this way the incoming degree of vertex 0 of E should be increased by 1. Now I'm uh, going through all the vertices, and if its degree is zero, I should put it to Q. Now, I will just go through uh, all Q. We have vertex V. Um, So what should we do? We should uh, look at the outcoming edge from this vertex. It goes to G of V and uh, erase this edge, uh, thus decreasing G of V by 1. And if it became 0, we should add it to the cube. Uh, this way, we have deleted all the... like. Uh, we know that there are no uh, leaves in our graph now. Uh, we started with uh, some cycles uh, with trees and we erased all the leaves. So all the trees are empty now. So we have just cycles. We didn't break any cycle because we can't. Uh, so we have some uh, vertices not erased. Uh, how to understand if we didn't erase the vertex? I didn't like, store any information. Well, actually, uh, for all the raised vertices, its in degree is zero, and for all others, it's non-zero, and it's actually exactly one because like we only have cycles. <laughs> So now I want to calculate the number of the cycles and this is the answer. How to do this? Uh, well, I want to uh, like find some cycle and erase all of it. Uh, how to do this? We will just go through all the vertices. If this vertex is dead, we will skip it. And otherwise, uh, this vertex is on some cycle, which we didn't erase yet. We should increase answer and then 
uh, kill all the vertices on the cycle. How to do that? Uh, well, we can start from this vertex and uh, go uh, through the cycle and kill them. Yeah, that's easy. Setting the in degree to zero is like killing the vertex. The vertex. Uh, so we have calculated the number of cycles. That's the answer. Okay, we can submit. For some reason, it don't says how much memory I used. Okay, so we have accepted two of these five problems. Let's go to checklist. Um, so this two. Accepted. Um.